I need some real praises to clap your hands and put some power in it right there. Come on, I need some real praises. Come on. You don't need no praise and worship leader. All you really need is the thought. Come on, I said clap your hands and give all the praise. I said clap your hands and give all the praise. Clap your hands and give all the praise. Come on, come on, I said put some authority in your hand clap. Yes, sir, look at your neighbor's the neighbor. It's Sunday morning.
to your feet. Come on, as we about to go into our prayer scripture, come on. As we acknowledge the word of God. Did we come to praise him this morning or what? Did we come to praise him this morning or what? If you don't know when or how to praise him, let me help you real quick. If you can hear my voice, if you can see me standing, you got a reason to praise him this morning. If he put food on your table and clothes on your back and got you here this morning, you got a reason to praise him this morning. See, you must understand that you cannot break the cycle of praise. When you get victory, you ought to praise him. And when you praise him, you will get the victory. You must never, never stop the cycle of praise on this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll be doing scripture from Psalms, a very familiar scripture. Psalms 24, verse 8 through 10, King James Version. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall what? And the king of glory shall what? Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is. I said he is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Oh king, we don't just need you on this morning, but we want you king. We don't just invite you in this morning, hallelujah. We welcome you, King. We welcome you into this building, O oh King. We welcome you into this sanctuary, O oh King. We welcome you into the balcony and the vestibule, hallelujah, O oh King. 
We welcome your presence, hallelujah, into this pulpit on this morning. We welcome you, hallelujah, into the, into the choir stand, into the musician section. We welcome you on this morning, hallelujah. And we don't just welcome you into this building, hallelujah, but we welcome you into our hearts, oh God. We welcome you into our hearts. Help us to love the unlovable, oh God. We welcome you into our minds, oh God. Hallelujah, you said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my minds, oh hallelujah. Hallelujah, anoint our hands for service on this morning, oh God, hallelujah. Touch our feet for witness, oh God, hallelujah. Anoint our voices, hallelujah, for singing, song, and praise. And anoint our speech for teaching and preaching, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, come into this building on this morning and just do what you got to do this morning. Take over this sanctuary this morning. Have your way on here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break down every wall. We must not leave here the way that we came in, oh God. We must get a touch from you on this morning. We must feel your presence on this morning, oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is in you that we live. It is in you that we move. And it is in you that we have our being. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need everyone to clap your hands. Clap, clap. Come on, come on. clap your hands. Hey. Clap your hands. I need some more hand clappers. Come on, put some power in. Come on, come on. Everybody clap your hands.
listen, come on. I need you to clap your hands, come on. I need some, come on, who's on your temple? Come on, I need you to clap your hands, come on, let's go.
adore you. We adore like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. Nobody. Let's take a 30 second worship break right there. Put it right there. Come on. Not for me. But we owe this right here to the Lord. And because we worship him at home, it's very easy to do it in unity. Come on, lift your voice and let a sound be heard in the room. We worship, we worship, adore, adore. we declare, we nobody like you. Nobody like Adore you. Adore. We declare we nobody declare. like you. Say so we worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore. We, we nobody like you. Like you. Say so we adore you. We declare nobody like you. 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 Angels bow before. Like and I like adore you. 
If you know that there's nobody like the Lord, give him your own personal praise. We owe it to him anyway. Hallelujah! Let the church say hallelujah! Come on, put your hands on it. I'm over this place. Shut your eyes. Oh, come on. I can't hear you. I need you to put your hands together. To... If your neighbor not clapping, I want you to frown at him. Tell him, put your hands up. Let's get a what break up on the Christian. I want to hear the hands. Put your hands up. Wow. 
his name thank you oh you sitting on the wrong road I said throw your head back and call his name like you know that name got power somebody throw your head back and holler Jesus your neighbor next to you and say neighbor I don't know what you need from God and tell him sometimes I don't have what it takes to pray a long winded prayer but say neighbor I can call one name and that one name will be all you need I want you to grab that neighbor by the hand and just holler that name to the top of your lungs and holler, Jesus! If that neighbor don't understand what you're talking about, I dare you grab the hand of another and say, neighbor, I don't know what you need from God. And tell him I ain't got time to pray a long-winded prayer. But tell him I'm gonna call one name that's going to speed up your results. I'm going to call one name that's going to shift things in your favor. I'm going to call one name that's going to fix every hindrance. Open your mouth and holler, Jesus. Somebody ought to clap your hands real fast and just holler, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah! Hey! Aya! Aya! Anda la boho! Hey, hey! Ia na 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 ha! Hey, hey! Yeah, anda boho! I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Ia na manda boho shabaha! Hallelujah! Yeah! He's a fixer. He's a healer. He's a mind regulator. He's a burden remover. He's a heavy load sharer. Call him. Yeah. Aya, I'm not on the boho. Hey. Woo. We gotta be good. We got guests. We got guests. Ta ta ta. Don't you do that, pop? Give pop 10 seconds. Good. neighbor say neighbor I meant what I said look at him say neighbor I meant what I said tell him I don't know what you need from God but I'm believing that the Lord is gonna release it for you that's for everybody watching online we got over 2,000 people watching us at the moment between YouTube and Facebook and I'm believing that as you praise God in your house Drive in your car as you bless them in this room that God's getting ready to shift some things on your behalf. I need you to grab that neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm about 
to praise God with you. Because when two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing on anything, tell them God's getting ready to handle it for us. If you believe it, don't wait on me. But go to dancing like you believe it's already. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at somebody next to you and tell them you don't know my story. So tell them please don't judge my praise. You don't know what I've just come out of. You don't know what I'm going through. And you don't know where I'm on my way to. So Fifi, when you see me praise it. Don't judge it, just say bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Yes. Hallelujah. Because he didn't brought me a long way. I said he brought me a long way. Somebody just give him a wave offering and tell him thank you. God is amazing. Listen, I'm getting out of your way. <laughs> I love this church. I'm behind the boat. I tell you, I join all over again. I the whole shot. I need to be at a church that know how to bless him on good days and bad days alike. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Listen, you praise out talk. But I want you to know that we want to get ready for Holy Convocation 2023. Can we clap our hands for what God is doing with the Pilgrim Assemblies? Let me say this. I have to thank God for New Zion Temple. You all showed out in an amazing way last week. Amen. You supported your bishop and then turned around and we supported our prelate to this amazing choir that came out in droves. I said as a proud pastor, as you all sat and sang behind our prelate on Sunday night, oh, well, not Sunday night, 
Thursday night. Amen. Y'all had to go to work the next day, but you came out. And I want to say thank you. Can you clap for yourselves and clap for our amazing music ministry? God is just so good. We had a great time on last week. And uh, Holy Convocation is coming up, and I want us to be just that strong. I'm looking to see everybody in that building. Amen. I mean, I want you. They used to say 40 on a mule. Is that how they say it? Am I saying that right? la di da everybody. That's what we'll say. <laughs> All right, I want everybody there all week long. Listen, and, and when you're there, you help your bishop to look good. Amen. And so uh, we have so much going on on that week, and you all know I'm the prelate over this region. Amen. So that's it. Clap your hands. And so, and so the weight of convocation is on my shoulders along with yours because you all are with me. Amen. So on that Tuesday night, which is a big night, uh, I don't know what the music ministry is wearing, amen, but I know on that Tuesday night is the kickoff, and for the first time ever, our prelate, Archbishop Hudson, is kicking it off, and we're going to be in our civic attire on that night, and so I don't know what everyone else is wearing, but I want you to obey the rules, amen. And uh, I need you to come. We need more ushers. We need more greeters. We need a lot of volunteers, amen, in, in every sphere uh, of the convocation. Archbishop Hudson is that Tuesday night. And then on that, on that Wednesday morning, we have things for our children from 10, from 9, I think, amen, to uh, 1145. They're going to be doing, you could drop your kids off, and they're going to have events for the children during that time and it's going to be a good time and having fun and all that good stuff what they got going on they told me but I just don't remember just bring your kids amen it's going to be an amazing time uh, and then after that at 12 noon uh, Dr. Juanita Bynum will be preaching amen yes the 12 noon hour Amen. And then after that, that night, amen, Bishop John Francis, all the way from London, amen, will be preaching on that Wednesday night. And then on that Thursday morning, same thing, there'll be prayer, there'll be things for our youth, but then they're having entrepreneur classes, they're having music workshops, they're having just you name it, you can find a space for you uh, to be a part of the events there. And at 12 noon, Bishop Brandon Jacobs will be preaching. Amen. But see, I know y'all know, I love it. I love it that you're excited. But I don't want y'all to only come to that 12 noon service. See, look, you're laughing because you know I'm to look, look, look. I see your face. Look at that face. Here. The devil, I need you. I need, I need us to pack it out all week. Amen. And then on that night, can I, can I tell y'all a secret? On that Thursday night, our old minister Noah Cunningham will be doing the sermon net on that Thursday night. Stand up, let him see you. So listen, we reverend all Thursday. Amen. He's doing the sermon net, and you know he's gonna do it, right? He got 12 minutes, and that I said, Oh, he don't need that. I said, give him seven. He, he, <laughs> they're going to give him 12 minutes. Amen. He's going to do the, the, uh, the sermonette that night. And then we're going to be hearing from Bishop Lambert Gates. Amen. After that. It's going to be an amazing time. And then on Friday afternoon, we have no classes doing that Friday. The only thing we have Friday is the 12 noon service with Bishop S.Y. Younger. Come on, come on. Ain't it? This, I'm going to tell you, you almost don't want to miss a day. Amen. And then on Friday, y'all know he my preacher. I say it all the time. Bishop Anthony Gilliard is preaching official day. And I need us, amen, to come out. But this is, a, this is, this is the other awesome thing. And this is why we, we really need to support. Our own Pastor Jarrell McDonald is being elevated to Episcopal Vicar on Friday night. So we need to be there to scream him on, amen, and to be there and cry. I'm going to just cry. I'm going to just cry all week, amen. And so can I cry? Can I cry? <laughs> so, no, <just laughs>
<laughs> it's going to be an amazing time. So I need us to be there. Amen. Because we believe that it's going to be an amazing time. Uh, if you haven't registered for Ignite, you need to register. Listen, and I keep saying this. We released the video the other day, but it is the truth that registrations are literally dwindling down very low to almost none. Uh, we're averaging close to 12 to 20 registrations a day. That's a lot by the end of the week. All right. So I need you. If you haven't registered, you are possibly. This is what they told me in my meeting this week. And Sister Haley uh, is here, Keith. They told me that, Bishop, we're going to probably have to close the services where we're not going to be able to let anybody that's not registered in because the registrations are taking up that much space. Isn't that amazing? That's right. That's right. And, and so uh, one hotel is sold out, over 300 rooms gone. We have now the La Meridian. They're saying that, that they almost don't have any more rooms to offer for that week, which is the hotel across the street. So if you, if you ain't got your room, if you, you can... I don't know what to tell you. And you know what happens. I'm going to tell you what happens. Y'all try to find me during the conference and try to, Bishop, can you, Bishop, don't, don't, no, no. Online and in this building. Don't you come to me because I didn't warn you. All right? And so that's where we are. So we need everybody to do what they're supposed to do. Amen. To make it happen. Listen, our first lady turns 40. <laughs> Y'all, she didn't cut her hair off. You see her? Don't she look good? She looks amazing. My God. I thought we were done after five kids. <laughs> no, we done. That was a joke. <laughs> that was a no. I know what she said, but the devil is a liar. Amen. But we are celebrating her. As you know, this coming Sunday, that Sunday night, we have all the way from Dallas, Texas, Dr. Cheryl Brady will be with us. Amen. To celebrate our amazing First Lady. Uh, so all day Sunday, we're going to turn up. If you have not RSVP'd for the party, the brunch on that Saturday, we want you to be sure that you do that uh, because on Wednesday, Whatever seats have not been taken, I'm going to open up to the public. So we have from now to Wednesday to RSVP your seats. Now, you know, seats are limited. The fellowship hall at the Hammond campus is not that big. Amen. So um, and I don't know where we are yet with seats. I don't even know if we have any left. But if you're coming, you need to get your name on the list if there's seats left. Because we, I think all of Hammond's seats, I think, are gone uh, but I think we have a little bit more seats left for the Indianapolis campus. So if you're going to get a seat, you need to do that. And I need you to be on time because um, we're doing the brunch during the day. So we can turn up in the evening. So <laughs> Amen. So it's going to be an amazing time. So I want you all to be sure that you're there. Amen. To love on our amazing executive pastor. And First Lady, amen. Isn't she lovely and beautiful? We thank God, amen. Listen, prayer corner is still going on. Amen. Elder Simone, wave your hand. I want you, if you have not uh, gotten your, your time when you're supposed to be out there, please get a hold of uh, Elder Simone as we are looking to win our community. We're on the prayer corner every Saturday praying and evangelizing to this community because we're believing God to bring in the souls. Amen. Sister Emerald, Sister Alante, I saw them. I don't have my glasses. Stan, are they, oh, Emerald's in the balcony. Where's Alante? Alante, there she is. Listen, I got good news. You all know that we're giving away a thousand book bags and 500 pair of gym shoes for back to school. Oh, now y'all, that was too, that was too low. Five, listen, so I need all your children here 
uh, on July 29th. Amen. It's a Saturday. We're starting at 12 o'clock. And so I need your children. We're going to have bouncy houses and a DJ. And we're going to be cutting your kids' hair and doing your girls' hair. But your hair, you got to come washed. Huh? All right? You got to come washed. And I mean wash it good. Amen. And don't come with no special request. We're going to already have the little few designs we're going to do. All right, so you try to come in here with a French roll. French roll, do they still do that in, in finger waves? They don't do that no more. She, she, she said, mm-mm, bitch. She said, mm -mm. All right, so, but listen, we're going we gonna to braid it, and so however they're going to do it, and they're going to look really pretty. All right, and we're going we gonna, to we gonna cut your boy's hair, and the boy's going to get boy cuts. And the girl's going to get girl dudes. I need to make that plain. We live in another world. Am I saying that right? Is it dues? Huh? Hair dues. Y'all know what I'm saying. All right. But just, just I'm saying that so y'all don't give our people a hard time. Because we're going to have a lot of kids out there. And we got to be able to make sure that we Haley coming to get me. We got to make sure that we're able to serve them in a very, uh, in a very excellent way. So I need you to spread the word. I don't want any book bags left, nor any gym shoes, because uh, we're going to be blessing all of our children. Amen. Come on. Oh, I thought you was coming to get me. All of our children. Uh, but this is what I need. Because we're giving away 1,000 book bags, I just don't think it's fair to only give away 500 pair of shoes. I need you. Those who are watching online, if you have any connects, and I want to thank God for Glenn uh, Robinson, who the basketball player who donated the 500 pair of shoes. Yeah. Isn't that good? Ooh, somebody say connections. All right. So, but I need I need 500 more because I want, if you get a book bag, I also want you to get a pair of shoes. So I need help. If you're online, if you're in the building, and you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can give me real shoes. <laughs> we don't want no buddies, all right? We're giving away Nikes and all that good stuff. So I need y'all, I need y'all to help me, all right? Uh, so we're still, and we're still accepting school supplies and donations because I want this July event to be amazing. And I need a lot of volunteers so that we can man the people. Because if you're giving away a thousand book bags, we're, we're expecting that kind of crowd. So I need, I need y'all to, and I, I need you to be nice. I need you to be what? I need you to leave all nasty attitudes at home. And I need y'all to come ready to serve the people with love. Amen. All right. I think that's good. Listen, 2080. Come on, Sister Haley. We're still doing our 2080 as we are looking, amen, to burn our mortgage and to acquire the mortgage. And we're doing something in both campuses. We're trying to pay off one and we're trying to acquire our own at another. So I need your help. I know that we, we've seemingly stopped the campaign, but I still need everybody, amen, to do what they need to do. Is that all right? Oh, God, we're late. Amen. Come on. Uh, we're getting ready to give. Come on, Sister Haley. If you need a giving envelope, I need you to lift your hands all over this place. Amen. So the ushers can help you and serve you uh, to give you a giving envelope. Haley's coming to lead us in our giving confession. Uh, let's receive her at this time. Grace in and Jesus peace, name. Zion. All right. Now we, Jesus has met us today. He has met us. So I'm going to do the grace and peace again. Grace and peace, New Zion. All right, let's prepare to give. We know that when we give here, we give cheerfully, amen? So I want everyone to stand as you're preparing your tithe and your offering and repeat this confession after me that we know to be true. We've heard it with testimony after testimony. So say it with some conviction, amen? As we give today's tithe, offering, and seed, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, benefits, business prosperity. I like how you saying it. Sales and commissions, settlements, estates, and inheritance, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, better yet, checks in my hand, gifts and surprises, 
finding money to my Cash App, to my PayPal, to my Venmo, and all electronic ways to transfer money. Bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, money's paid back, and loans paid off. We shall lend and not borrow. We shall prosper and be in health. We shall give and be blessed. It's offering time and we will praise the Lord. We will give cheerfully in Jesus name. Amen, follow the leading of our ushers. I want you to come around as we give. Heaven open, fire is falling tonight. Jesus made everything right. What did you do? I gave him my own filthy garment. And he gave me. He gave me a love of your life. And, and I'm feasting on man up from heaven. That, that is why I'm having tonight. Oh, the windows of heaven are open. Fire is falling tonight. I've got joy. ready to increase your people in a way that you're going to blow our minds mentally, physically, and financially. We thank you that windows and doors are open and that your increase is headed our way. We praise you, God, for the victory that you're giving unto us. And now, God, we pray that you do for this offering like you did for the fishes and the barley loaves, that you multiplied in so much that it's more than enough. And we seal this under your blood. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. All those in agreement said, amen. Come on, clap your hands if you love him one more time. Listen, it is such an amazing honor to have with us on this morning, Pastor Michael Lampkin. 
man, I love you. He has, we've been, we've been together about two weeks. We just, we just keep being in the same room and I thank God for his humility and for his love with all that God is doing for this great man of God. The Lord just blessed him with an amazing new facility. Can we clap our hands for that? It is beautiful. Amen. And I thank God also, amen, for this powerful woman of God. I was, she was selling jewelry on Instagram. And she started singing until I was on the plane. Plane was getting ready to take off. And she started singing on that thing. And before I knew it, I was on the plane crying. They were, Are you all right? I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just, I'm just high in Jesus. Amen. And I want to thank God for this awesome woman of God, Pastor Natalie Kilpatrick. Come on. Come on. I plan for us to hear from Amen. Both of them coming soon, and we thank God for their presence. But I thank God, amen, this morning for a prophet, amen, amongst prophets. Amen. The hand of God is on him. He's from my neck of the woods. Amen. And he was pastoring in Newark, uh, New Jersey, and now he's just on the field uh, blessing the lives of people. And I thank God that he's in New Zion Temple on this morning. Can you clap your hands for Prophet Brian Mosley? Oh, you could do better than that. Amen. And listen, I want to, if y'all will let me, I want to release him. Amen. To just come however the Lord wants him to come. I want him to come and just let God use him any way he wants to and I want us to receive the anointing on this man of God's life somebody bring me something to clean my mic I'm gonna let him use my mic amen glory to God hallelujah amen thank you uh, let's stand in honor of who he is and the hand of God on this life as we receive this general in the kingdom of God amen prophet Brian Mosley while you're standing put your hands together and celebrate this great man of God the distinguished Bishop Jacobs come on give him a great big hand I want to call him Archbishop certainly his lovely wife give her a great big hand certainly honored to have my associate Reverend Davis our dear daughter Pastor Hoskins give her a great big hand and of course I told Natalie I said now you done started something God bless her give her a great big hand Father, we thank you for this time of spiritual quest and spiritual renewal in the body of Christ. We don't have to ask you to come. You're already here. We sense your presence and we extol you. There's no one like you. We say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Thank you, Jesus, for the touch. Thank you for this man of God. Put wings on the words and movement in the message and power in the proclamation we ask it in jesus name let everyone say amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord i'm certainly honored this wonderful chorale this wonderful praise team now let me tell y'all something some of us sing all we can but you sang all you wanted and so that's country that's hood so you but they sang all they wanted, and I thank God. Uh, and certainly, uh, this young man on the organ, uh, I was in Chicago some years ago, and he's always spoke highly of his leader. Come on, give Chris a great big hand. Certainly, 2 Kings chapter 20. Um, <clears throat> Just before you stand, there's a little, little, little piece of a song, a little something. I, you know, I'm from, you know, that school. We still believe in hymns. And, 
Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory, glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, and I've been purchased by God. Oh Lord, I've been born of His Spirit. And I've been washed. I've been washed in his blood. I'm gonna leave that alone. I gotta say it one time more time. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I'm in my Savior. And I'm happy. Look at somebody tell them, man, I'm happy. I'm so happy and blessed. <laughs> I've been watching and waiting. What about you? Looking up. Oh, no, 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 no. I've been born of his spirit. I've been washed. I've been washed in his blood. You know what I want you to tell somebody? This is, this is my story. Oh, this is my, my song. Praising my Savior. I'm gonna praise him. Can I tell somebody, tell them, I'm gonna praise him. All the day long This is my story I'm not going to start nothing This is Tell your neighbor My song Praising My Savior I'm getting happy now I said praising My Savior Oh, I'm going to praise him all day long. I said, this is, you know, years ago they said, this is, this is, this is my story. How many got a story in here? This is my song, praising my Savior, my Savior. I'm going to praise them. Can I get someone to praise them? All day long. Come on, tell us. Oh, this is my story. How many got a testimony? Look at somebody and tell them, this is my song. Raising my Savior. Uh, I'm gonna praise him all day. Long. Yes, yes. Come on, if you got a yes in you, say it. Yeah, yeah. Now put your hands together and thank God. Thank God. Thank Him. Thank him, thank him. He's already here. You're, you're standing on a praise road. Just tell somebody this road has already been deputized to keep the flow. I'm not going to mess with it. Because I, I, I've told them often that this stuff is better than Hennessy. <laughs> Stronger than wine. It's sweeter than the honey. And the honeycomb. But you got to taste and see. 
that the Lord yeah. and I'm not worried I'm not worried about the have and the have nots because I've got the guiding light and you know the guiding light will keep you as the world tell you only oh, one life to live and you got to do that one day at a time and if you're not careful the doctor will get you and you'll end up in general hospital with all your children as the world turns. But lift your hand and say, tell somebody I'm glad I'm here. Second Kings 20. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and he was at the point of death. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. How many got a prayer life? How many know you got to do that? And you don't do it just because in an emergency those of you that have relationship with God understand that you ought to be on speaking terms now oh Lord he said please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in thy sight Hezekiah wept bitterly and before Isaiah had uh, gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. He turned back and said to Hezekiah, the leader of the people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. Aren't you glad that he hears prayer? Tell your neighbor he hears you the first time. You know, yeah, he heard me the first time. I was I was with a girl years ago, and you may be seated, and I was there, and she threw something at me. Yeah, they, they can become violent. Yeah. Especially in those days, I had more than one. And the high schools weren't connected. There was no technology. There wasn't, and anybody had a mobile phone, they were rich. But we grew up in a village. And we had Lucille and Miss Hattie. And, and all of those country and hood names. And if you skip school, the lady would lean over on her porch through her screen say, your mama know you out of school. <laughs> so y'all don't know nothing about that. And when your mama got home, she would ask you like Judge Judy, how was school? Yeah. <laughs> and she already knew that you were lying. We ran all over the city, everywhere from second period all the way because most people, if they are honest, they checked in so it could be on the attendance. I'm glad I got witnesses over here. There was no mall to go to. We went out in the field. I'm not going to tell you nothing else. And most of the time, okay, let, 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 let me get back here. Because somebody said, don't, don't mess with, don't mess with my auntie and all of that. But how many know that the Lord... <laughs> How many know the Lord is faithful? He said, I heard your prayer. He heard you the first time. I said that to say this, you know, sisters and brothers, if you're married, you know, she said, did you hear what I said? You, you could be on your device and he'll look up. I heard you. I don't care how sweet the romance is an hour ago. You know, things can change during the afternoon. See, I'm not going to be long in here. And you said, I heard you already. What, you got an attitude? 
heard you. But I'm glad that God heard me the first time. I wish I had somebody in here that knows the fervent and effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I feel like running. I'm just trying to figure out what I ought to run down. Because he heard me the first time. And that's not even my subject, but he, I just felt that. That he heard, and then, so I hear you saying, well, yeah, that's good. He heard me the first time, but what should I do? Cause should I? I said, well, after you prayed the first time, you ought to thank him like it's already done. I'm, I'm not going to bother you because God has worked some stuff out for you before you got where you were going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already in the judge's chambers. See? And so he said, I've heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. How many know that we cry? Come on. The, the strongest man in here cries. Now, he may not let you see him cry. But Jesus wept. And he was the strongest man in here. He wept over his, come on, somebody. His friend, and, and if you, how many have friends? I'm not talking about people that claim to be friends. But you have friends that don't need a loan. That don't need you to co-sign. That, okay, let me. I've seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you on the third day. Uh, and you should go up to the house of the Lord, verse 6, and this is it. And I will add 15 more years to your life. I said, Lord, you know, as much as we preach, and this year marks 50 years for me as a licensed preacher. And yeah, yeah, God's been good. Keep on getting the wake-up call. And anybody over 40... And I don't know now it's lower than that, but if you get in the wake-up call, you blessed. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you got up. Now, when you get a little older, you get up on the first call. You don't wait on the second. Yeah. Get up and do what you got to do, even if you start napping in the morning. I want to use for a subject real quickly, but I said that to say this. We've been preaching long enough that you take sermons. Yeah. <laughs> you put them together, don't you? <laughs> God, the man said, I need a word. I said, use the one you had two years ago. <laughs> but I said, the only difference now, you're on camera. And these, these young folk are something else. They'll, they'll get close to you. And they'll say, didn't you, pre didn't you preach that at another conference? Did the Lord give you that? They tell your neighbor, it's all right. And certainly, God has given me a word for you. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, if you don't remember nothing else, remember this. If you don't like the verdict, file an appeal. I want you to find two people and tell them that. Go two people and tell them. Get out your comfort zone. Get up and tell two people. If you don't like the verdict, file an appeal. You think it'll work? I, I, think, I, I think that it will hunt. File an appeal. The backdrop of this text Isaiah and Hezekiah, there was certainly, um, and I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of a sermon here. Uh, <laughs> there was contention between the two, and uh, they weren't talking. There was some contention, and of course, in 715, I, uh, Isaiah, Hezekiah took the throne over Judah. Uh -huh. And let me say oftentimes that God will stand back 
when folk ain't talking that should be talking. God will stand back and he will allow calamity to create itself into something. God does not always get involved, and yet he's involved in the situation. But he'll stand back and he'll say, I'm going to let them figure this out because I already got a plan. Now, you pray with me because I'm, on, I'm taxiing out right now. There are some preachers that are helicopters. They just take off. But I need a runway. I'm trying to build a case here because I want you to understand I'm not going to be long because I believe somebody is already blessed. But somebody has filed an appeal. And I want you to know if you know God, then you know that he is a prayer answering God. Hezekiah gets sick. And in the grand scheme of things, God will oftentimes, uh, because he has time. Time is on his side. Time, a lot of times, are not on our side. And if you live long enough, you have more time behind than in front of you. And that's why I tell young people to use the time you have. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. And, and use time as an ally. Because you're going to need time when you're in lockup. You're going to need time. You're going to need time when you're in the emergency room. And how many know that God can fix it? But sometimes he has to let us see some stuff about ourselves. And so God will often stand back and even watch a country fight over democracy, argue over uh, the social injustices. Because actually, God will not be mocked. Talk to me, America. God will not be mocked. I've watched folk cut up and carry on around the country about God. They don't know him. The old folks say he's too big, he's too high. You can't get it. You know all that talk they used to. Come on. But how many know that we're not dealing with just anybody? We're dealing with sovereignty. Look at somebody and say sovereignty. Sovereignty will allow free will to negotiate my situation and situations. Tell somebody say he's a situation. Yeah, yeah, that's hood too. That's just like I told somebody the other day. I said, God's fissing to do something. You, you know he's going to do it, right? He, uh, he, now, I know some of you are proper, you, you know, you're academic, and that's fine, I am too. But sometimes I forget the halls of academic, come on somebody, and I say, he fits in to do it. Grandma, say it right now, if you go to the convalescent home, she'll look up at you and say, he fits in to do it. It's going, they didn't need theology because they were walking theology. And I tell folk all the time, if you want to do good at the craft, go to the old folks' home. There, there may not be hermeneutics there, but somebody will tell you that he's been a way maker. Yes. Come on, somebody's grandmother is, is a walking, sitting in the chair theologian. Yes. She'll tell you, I raised nine heads by myself with God. As I tell people, you run into these stores these grocery stores, and you go down certain aisles and you see a black woman leaning like this, don't mess with her. Especially if she got some age on her. I don't care if the stockings are down around her ankle. She'll turn around and say, well, excuse me. Yes, thank Who are you? And you'll say, ma'am, no, who are you? Said so-and-so, mm-hmm. Well, what kind of work you do? And when you start getting, see, you're going to stir up something. And she said, you go to church, don't you? Yes, ma'am, I go to church. Mm, I know you do. Kim, let me tell you something. And when she starts talking to you about he made a way out of, no way. You have to understand that there are people that understand who God is. And he doesn't just put food on the table. 
He doesn't just uh, put you in a nice car, but God, the God I'm talking about keeps your, you know, we have what they call esophagus. And there come, some people have experiences in families where the person can't even swallow anymore. And what we take for granted, it's easy now to get dressed on your own. But ask the boy that's in a wheelchair. He's got to wait on somebody. When you think about the fact that you were delivered from the program, the drug program, uh, when you think about where you've come from, no one should have to tell you to praise him. If you have breath, that's a reason right there. Another reason is that I'm alive. How many folk in here alive? Breathing is a reason. I want one person to jump up and say, glory. You think about friends that went to high school with you. It's quiet up in here. And they meet you somewhere at the mall. Wow, and that's the new another thing. Wow, whatever that's all about. And they say, you don't even look old. Where you been? In church? Come on, I've been lifting up holy hands. I've been giving God the glory because he blessed me. It's a great thing to have your right mind now. You got crazy people at 30. Talk to me, somebody. Don't have the common or the sense. I'm almost finished. The highest court, the highest court uh, in the Western Hemisphere is the Supreme Court. And... Uh, even it is of no consequence when it comes to divine sovereignty. You can argue at this level. You can go on social media. Pundits can take a shot at morality all they want. But at the end of the day, it does not change God's mind or mood. Where are you going? I'm going to show you in a minute. Let me help somebody. Nothing that God has put in this book called the Bible is up for negotiation. As it relates to divine precedence. See, God's not going to change. I heard him say, I'm God and I change not. God will not change the Decalogue to suit my party. It's quiet now. Whether I'm on the left or the right, God's word will stand. For it says, some of the grass withered and flower, flower faded away, but what? The word. Somebody shout the word. word. Singing makes you happy and praying makes you holy, but it takes the word. Yeah. It takes the word to keep you. Now, don't tell me, talking about. Uh, the Holy Ghost is a keeper. I ain't never seen him keep anybody. Because if he was a keeper, then, okay, let me go back here. If he wasn't a keeper, talking about the Lord will keep him. You know, he keeps you who's mine. You used to sing a song. I wish I had a piano. I'd play it. Uh, I got a mind to live right in the I got a mind to live right. Mm -hmm. I got a mind to live right every day. Mm -hmm. If Jesus saved me, sanctified me, oh, I got a mind to live right mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. I got a mind to walk right. Mm -hmm. I got a mind to walk right. I got a mind to walk right every day. When Jesus saved me, sanctified me holy, I got a mind to walk right every day. That's enough. Ah! Ah! 
I'm getting happy right now. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I got a mind. It's in, it's in my mind. Now in here, I'm, you know, but see, I got to take this out with me and go back to corporate America with my mind. Stage it takes discipline. I'm almost through. It takes discipline to do things. Lady said to me, I want you to pray that the Lord will take all this weight. I said, Hold it. I can pray all I want to. Lady got in the aisle and said, I want you to pray that my bills go down. I said, Well, hold it. Come, come, come. Am I talking to somebody? I had somebody ask me the other day, pray that I stop smoking marijuana. Because you know you want to. You know you want to. I'm not going to be long. I'm almost finished now. See, if you want, the other guy said to me, hey, Rev, I said, what? Pray that I stop cussing. Now, they don't cuss in Indiana. Come on, I'm, I'm on the homework. Come on, teenagers, talk to me. And, and, and this is what I want to say about those little things. Those little, you know, things. You're getting weak, you know. What you got to do, don't be around or remove yourself from the weed. <laughs> but my buddy smokes. See, let, let me, okay, let, let me do this. You, I got to get back here and do a, you know, a little more. Yeah. See, when I came along, we had a vibe, but it didn't have anything to do with gin. We were just high on being a teenager. Okay. And there was some that, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, they could fuck. But there's some discipline. If I pray that you come out of debt and you have no financial plan, you are not going to stay out. You will remain, you, you repeat the cycle. It is, or it comes down to lifestyle. And when you are believing for a particular number on the scale, you've got to cut back. Let me get back to the Bible. Though no, <laughs> come on. Nothing is up for negotiation as it relates to precedent, except for the fact that the plaintiff has a valid argument that has legal standing. Everything don't have legal standing. That's why when they break up in church and churches split down the middle, end up in court, the judge says uh, to the church, this has no legal standing in this court here. This is a personal thing. They need to go back and try to work this out themselves. You know, y'all haven't been around in a while. You know, churches go through court situations. Mm -hmm. and, and not here, but I'm talking about other places. I want you to understand it has to have, but But look at this verse. One, one, look at this. Once a verdict has been handed down, you actually have at least two weeks to file an appeal. At the, at the appellate level or the appellate court will hear the argument that would be overturned by the lower court. But your attorney, your attorney has to file within the set time of the, of the situation and the merits of your case, the facts. Listen, constitutional issues, violation of human rights, whatever it is, but it has to be filed by a certain time. And at the lower court, that ruling there is going to stand. 
It will not be reviewed until the appellate court decides to grant review at some point. Let me get back to church here because that's jurisprudence. But let me tell you what the Lord says. 2 Kings 20. The divine court of appeals. Tell your neighbor he heard I heard Hezekiah's cry. I know, I know you, I, and you and I know that God does not change. Mute it, let me mute it. That's right. But God's, whoa, my God, sovereignty is not on trial in America. If he said it, watch your voice. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, if he said it, it will stand. How many know what I'm talking about? Somebody here, before I come down there and minister to somebody, somebody is in the, on the brink of something. And, and, and you are filing an appeal. God told me to tell you that remember in Chronicles, 7 and 14. Yeah. Remember the then clause of the verse. Yeah. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you got to read the contract every now and then. You got to read this Bible so you know what your standing is. <laughs> so when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy, the oh Lord, Tells you that according <laughs> when the enemy tells you that the cancer is in the fourth stage according to the oncologist they look at you and show you the results but something way down on the inside ought to tell you that I am God. According to the higher court, it ought to tell you according to Psalm 118, I shall not die, but I shall live. And Declare the works of the Lord. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. You can put a little tune in your voice. You ain't got to call yourself a preacher. Say, neighbor. I don't know how you feel. I've already filed. And in the court of heaven, I heard him say, then will I hear from heaven and I'll heal your land. Get out of your seat and go to somebody and say, neighbor, if you don't like the verdict, file an appeal. And I'm so glad. I said, I'm going to sit my black self down, but I'm so glad. There's somebody here that has filed for an appeal. And I heard the high court say, the Lord is my shepherd and I. He maketh me to lie down. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. The high court said, yes, sir. He leadeth me. Besides still waters, he restored my soul. Yea, though, yea, though, I've walked through the valley and tell somebody, say, neighbor, the high court is in the room. You need to file an appeal. You need to tell your boss that according to the text, I'm going to be 
the landlord and not the tenant. You need to tell somebody according to the text. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him. Somebody say, be able. Yes. To do exceedingly. Abundantly. Above what? Can I get three people to go to three people and say, neighbor, I don't know how you feel about it. I've already appealed to the high court and I got word from heaven that said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you what? Shall be knocked. And the door shall be what? The door is open. Whatever you need, God's got it. Is there anybody here? I feel like preaching right now. Is there anybody here that still believes that he can do it? Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the high court said, for all of the promises are yea. Can I get somebody to go to somebody and say the Lord is it? The Lord said yes, 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 yes. The Lord said yes, yes. Everybody become a prophet. Get out your seat. Find somebody and say yes, yes, yes. Well, well. The high court ruled whom the Son set free is free indeed. While you're standing, the Lord said, get familiar with the text. Because when the enemy comes in, he doesn't care about the dance. When the enemy comes in, and tries to tell you that you don't have a right to claim that property. When you have the text, the high court said, the earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof, and what? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just got a new address. I haven't moved in yet, but I'm on. I, 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 right about right now, 37 years ago, when the preacher got like this, somebody would holler if I couldn't say a word. If I couldn't say a word, talk to me, somebody. If I couldn't say a word, what would you do? I did away. Go to somebody and say it's going to be all. It's going to be all. Oh, Lord. It's going to be all. Tell your neighbor, oh, 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 all right. Look at somebody say, neighbor, I don't know how you feel about it. You can't get nothing from God looking cute. You got to get ugly. I feel like getting ugly. Because I got a feeling that any day now is going to be in my account. Any day now.
that filed an appeal on the other day turn all the way around and say neighbor when you see me turning that's God moving my stuff What the devil has said as I minister, the devil says that it's not going to happen. Because the devil is looking at the FICA score. The middle score, when, come on realtors, usually the bank is looking in the middle score. But how many know that you serve a God that can put you in four bedrooms with no money? neighbor say neighbor I'm going to get that house he said I've already contacted the mortgage company while I'm speaking prophetically somebody's family member that's been locked up I heard the Lord say I'm going to shut my mouth up that I'm going to visit him. Right? Now turn around and tell three people. Say, neighbor, God is in your house right now. So go ahead and dance. Go ahead. stand and not be overturned. Listen to this as I minister to some of you all before I sit down because the Holy Ghost is up in here. I always, oh, oh, oh. See, this is how revival started 30 years ago. And then you'd come back around, uh oh. But let me tell you, if you have filed an appeal, God said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. As a matter of fact, while I'm standing here, don't you give up on all of your school debt remaining on or in the system. God said, I'm going to do something in spite of the people that don't want you debt free. I can't hear nobody. Young lady right here, would you put your hands up? Come go in the aisle. I won't get to everybody in this service. Throw your hands up. The Lord said two or three words to me about you. When I came and sat up here, he said, when you finish giving this word about the appeal, you tell her she won't need another lawyer. Now start dancing. I don't know you, but 
the Lord said that I've already handled the young man. I saw him when he left breakfast this morning in the facility and the Lord said don't worry about it because I'm going to fix this somebody get somebody's hand and start me your neighbor is already done. Say it out your belly, it's already done. Over the next 31 months, after 2025, after 2025, everything that you've asked God to do as it results to paying stuff off, he said, I'm going to start paying stuff off for you. He said every one of the campuses will take care of themselves. <laughs> To me, don't take long getting to me. If you're under 20, come to me. I got a word for you. Throw your hands up as you come. In this group are pediatricians. In this group are educators. In this group, there are entrepreneurs. In this group, God's going to save daddy. In this group, your living arrangements are going to shape up. I speak over your academics, and I call you blessed. Every one of you start dancing for it. Somebody help me. began to touch the Richardson family. Look at somebody and tell them any day now. I want you to say it until something happens to you. Say any day now. Something has already shifted in this house. Hallelujah. The pastor's wife, lift your hands up. There's an anointing. And God said the connect would be even among those that are in health care. The Holy Spirit said, I'm adding to something. It will be residual. It says pay to the order. I show. And as you came today, I don't know how you got it one, but the Lord said an angel was in this electric car. Now start dancing.
Somebody, while y'all were singing, said, I'm handling your living arrangements. Don't even worry about it. God's got his time set where there'll be no sharing of space. But I'll give you, I'll give you your own. I've got something on a lease or something. Start dancing. There are some other things that are going to be settled here. You just, you just watch God. Come here, son. The Lord said you got some oil, but it's coming real fast. When you came up earlier and they begin to talk about you, come closer. Throw your hands up. God said, I'm doing something. Everything that you want to accomplish is already paid for. The Lord said you, you have walked in such character and integrity that he can trust you with what he's going to do in here and outside. The Lord said, I'm going to give you influence. All of the schooling is paid for. It's already done. Go to three other people and say it's already done. Whose child is this? Most people got to call your child. You somebody's child. This is somebody's son. Okay, she's dancing, huh? Huh? Well, I want you to know, first of all, I want you to do something for me. Will you do something for me? Start dancing. Do whatever your dance is. Give him some dancing music. Start leaping. that I'm going to bless your studies because you have all it takes for leadership. But you got to lay into it more. God said, I want to bless you at some point in your life in that whole area of English grammar and that strong, I want you to run now. Go ahead and run, you can do that. Somebody run with me. Mother, sister, that's mom there, right? I'm going to tell her something and I want you to witness this. Because the Lord said, when I looked at her, the Lord said, I put something in her when she was in your womb. I said, what is it? She has this capacity for people, but it's also connected to pediatrician. Start dancing, doctor. something. 
Who's that's your sister? You come over here. But I'm going to do something because I'm going to show you a shot. The Lord said, you let him know that the oil that runs off of you will run on him because he's going to be a preacher in his generation. Shake yourself out. Shake yourself out. prophetic or whatever the gifting is, it begins with children. Samuel was a baby and that's where it starts. You believe it, don't you? I want you to throw your hands up. Something just blessed your whole family. Whoever's connected with her, I saw a brand new door in kitchen. Something has shifted in the house. As a matter of fact, everybody gets somebody by their hands, two hands, and I'm going to show you how much anointing is in here. When you start holding their hands, give God seven glories and watch what happens. something I heard him say that something about career crossroad and there's four of you that are going to be able to make a decision on what work I'll be doing in and over the next year and the persons that need to finish up classes I ain't gonna bother you God said, I'm paying for that semester. I can't hear nobody. You go ahead, son. All the way. You can have it. Come here. It's been paid for. Now dance. Hey. Hey. It's been paid for. Now dance. And whatever, whatever happened in the previous semester, God said, keep it behind you. I'm already doing something brand new. All the way down and all the way up to entrepreneurship. And there's cosmetology in here. I'm going to shut up. Said, I've already started blessing. I hear something about Kaelin, too. I don't understand it. But the Lord... I heard the Lord said, I'm doing something for Caleb. And that, that, now, said, you tell her mm -hmm, that there's something that says pay to the order of the Steele family. Now start dancing. Somebody start leaving in here. Put 
specificity on this prophetic word. The Lord said it's bigger than a camera. I want somebody that believes that God is speaking clearly. Run in the middle aisle and do something. That's right, straighten the prophet out. Well, it's good that you can still look young. Glory, glory. I want you to say Madam C.J. Walker. Madam C.J. chairs in the place. That's good. And 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 you you need to stick with it. Because God said the possibility of ownership. You know what you told God the other day. Yeah, you won't be the same for the rest of the day. My 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 Oh, Shiloh, oh, sit down. What I wanted to tell you is that you have academic excellence. Waking up and going to bed, going to school, it's in you. You will go further than you ever thought. And numbers, that's where it is. I don't know your card or anything, but the numbers, the math, and when you start saying, oh, yeah, it comes to you. That's the Elijah in you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I can't do this all. Listen, the Holy Ghost got me. Get somebody's hand and holler wealth. I want you to say it until some God puts another number by the other number. Sit down. There are two things I've got to do. Oh, glory. Look at somebody and tell them I won't be the same after this. Now, so those that are going back for a follow-up, whether it's to check the blood or to get the results, whatever it is that deals with the doctor between now and the middle of August, you need to be over on this wall. That's the first thing on that wall there and then I'm going to tell you something and then I'm going to the next thing because somebody is about yeah that somebody is uh, yeah somebody is about to come into some money 
and they have held this money up but the interest because when they wanted to settle I'm not finished with you when they wanted to settle the numbers weren't right and this is bigger than work and comp and all of that mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into your business on camera I don't do that I'm a different prophet I don't need you to prove anything but this is God talking huh the, th the third and fourth lumbar who are you mm -hmm. I saw you when you came in this morning and sometimes it runs down my leg it's aggravating check yourself take it like you mean it glory now check it check it go ahead check look at that who did that I know God while I'm talking to them, the Lord's doing something with the thyroid. And this is where all this exhaustion is. Can't even get myself together. And then the interruption in my sleep because I should be sleeping through. I'm going to shut up. I'm not doing this. The numbers in your blood just change. They're going to be a little too. But see, something is pressing on the nerve yes. that keeps it aggravated. Yes. Um, and as I'm walking down here, watch what God does. I'm working behind the eyeballs, the strain. Now, as I'm walking, God's moving the string. As I'm walking, it tries to mimic a, 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 a migraine. But I heard God if they feel. Yeah, what you tell us or what? Yeah, because the Lord spoke about you already. Go down to the front. You go to this church, go down to the front. I want you to dance, do something, because God just did something for the kidney. Who's his family? Who did he come with? He came by himself. Let him know later on that between now and the 21st, because I saw an appointment. It's all right. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. I, I, I ain't bothered that. What's going on here? Now look, you all can go back to your seat now because it's done. See, God doesn't need me. See, what you should be doing is dancing back to your seat. Because it's already done. But can I get five people to go to five people and tell them God done did it? and bouncing and I said Lord what is it I want somebody to holler money in here all they it's a click of the button all they got to do is click this I want somebody to holler money when you said it that time your rent got paid up three weeks three months now let me ask you a question if your mortgage was paid up until t next year, what would you do? Now, while you were dancing, the Lord said, ask him what size apartment. Since he's looking, I don't know nothing about it. Yeah, you here. Huh? You here. He's looking. 
He said, no more sharing. But watch when the wind blows in two weeks. God's going to do something called favor. phone or in a pocketbook or wallet, you that are out there, listen to me. Every person, how many persons did I say? Because I've got to sit down because something got a hold of me. I call you the head and not the tail. Now listen to this. When the prophet, take your guitar off for a minute. those little things in front of me. I don't want to tear up now. Yeah. I was on my way in the back, coming back down, and we all met with the bishop the other day. But the Lord said, something is going to open up for you musically that's going to bless a whole lot of folks. Because of your faithfulness, I'm, you don't, and, and you don't treat it a gig, you treat it as ministry, and that's what the Lord loves. I love the man of God, I love the church. I'm going to start. in the making. I want you to say 100. I want you to say it until something happens to your account. Every person, when the prophet came to the woman in her dilemma, he said, go out your door and collect vessels. I want every person to follow instruction. I don't want a line. I want you and the hundred dollars to go in the center aisle somewhere while these angels are gathered. Quickly, don't wait on nobody. Don't wait on nobody. Look at that. Wherever you are, you ought to be in the aisle. Whether it's on my phone, wherever it's at, just go in there because something just shifted. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Look at God. Look at God. Hallelujah. I'm taking care of a bill that you've only paid on and can't get it paid off. But watch the other 50 people. That's right. Go in the aisle and just take your seed of $100. Just wave it. Just start waving it. Yeah, yeah. Online, I want you to hear me start sowing and they have the instructions uh, so you know what to do you can swipe if you're standing there come on 
Come on, walk by me. That's right. If you're swiping, everyone lift your hands up. Those other people that are still standing, I want you to say, well, Brother Moses, I don't have all of it, but I'm going to give as much as I have to it. God said I'm blessing on obedience right now. So you go in the aisle. That's right. Go in the aisle. God's talking. There shouldn't be a person in this seat. Start walking this way. And so it. Everyone. Everyone. Come on. Everyone. That's right. If you're standing there, come on. And all over this house. Enlarge my territory. Yeah, enlarge it. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge. Enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Come on. Got, it just got sold. over I speak over your finance and it shall be given come in come in come in it shall be given good measure press down Shake it. you're the last person I'm done Glory. there are a couple of, when you get where you're going start dancing everybody when you get back to your apartment or house dance because he said I moved the spirit out and my I can't okay Lord, I feel like right. Oh! Don't you stop, let me. But you're not with them now. I can't hear nobody. I heard you in the back saying, hold the music because I want them to hear this. But I don't know why I'm not here. I, I, we live in the... He's not in your future. If the prophet can tell you about houses and land and cars, can a real one tell you the truth? Sometimes we're living with people that they're not ours. Having sex, 
but they're not ours. You got to find the Bible said he that find it. Go on with your studies. And if he's for you, I'm going to shut my mouth. Why come out of school over biceps that don't know what responsibility is? I'm going to leave that alone for the next time. But if I bless all of you sisters. Their wedding's coming. And I'm not talking about somebody broke down and ain't got nothing. You got to wait for him, and he's still in the bathroom. <laughs> when you get in your place, God knows how to show up. God said, I'm saving somebody's grandson right now. God said, I'm safe. Everyone start dancing because somebody in your family is going to get saved before this year is out. something with a mortgage payment. Now, both of you get up and start dancing right now. and go in the middle aisle and dance. Everybody! Woo! Listen, we ain't gonna stop you from dancing. We love you online. If you haven't shown online, I want you to sow in this anointing that's in this room. This man was seeing through bricks in here today. Because I know some of y'all didn't already talk to me, so I know what he was talking about. Let me say this. Where's Haley? Come back. Where's Cameron? In the Bible days, when the prophet would come and the word would be accurate, you sowed into it by faith because you knew it was the mouthpiece of God. I don't want to dishonor the anointing on his life. I want everybody, if you didn't have the hundred, that don't matter, get a seed online and in this building. Get a seed and run it up here quick, 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 quick. Just run it up here, run it up here. I believe in blessing the prophet. That man came in here on assignment. Now, Christian, y'all pack up all your stuff because we late. I'm going to be running in preaching. Still going to have to drive like a. All right. <laughs> See, I need an escort. You need, I, need a, I need a police escort. So, so into this anointing. Whatever you have, by faith, whatever God give you. Go on, Christian. You and Chico switch because you take the longest to get in the car. I love you. You know I love you. you know. But he take the longest to get in there. We be ready to go. We wait no Christian. Taking pictures. <laughs> hey, Aya, did God meet us in this place? Did God meet? Bless you, Pastor. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. I knew I knew who you were. I just was trying to figure it out why I was up here. But he made me know. I love you, Pastor. I love you, man. I love you, sir. God bless you. Did God meet us? Come on, Minister Noah. He's going to give us our, our club. Wait, wait, wait. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, you know you, listen, you know you want to be a member of this church. Ain't no, ain't no sense of, ain't no sense of, 
I was trying to make it cute. You know this way you're supposed to be. So come on and come. Look to your left, look to your right, and say, neighbor, quit playing with God. Tell them, if you know this way you're supposed to be, I know many have left already. Tell them, you come on right now. Come on right now and make the best decision of your life so God can change. If you're not saved, you come. If you don't know Jesus, come right now. Let God do a work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless him. We love him. Come on, minister. I love y'all. All right. I see. You know we don't have no Bible study for the rest of the month. Ooh, that was too much joy. <laughs> we in convocation now. <laughs> we was cultured for one week. Well, now we back over here to oneness now. Come on. <laughs> now listen. Now listen. Now listen. Uh, Bible. <laughs> because there's no Bible study, there should be no excuse for us not being in convocation. All right, y'all got one whole week off to breathe and stay saved. All right, and I want to see y'all, amen, at church. Come on, we here. God, I love it. I was having Minister Noah do it, but come on, come on with me. Catch this anointing while I do it. Come on, stand up on your feet, everybody. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the prophet. Bless him. Put your hands on him. Increase him. Let there be no lack nowhere. I pray that you strengthen him for his next assignment. We honor the seniors in the ministry. And we pray, oh God, that you be with him. Cover us with your blood as we leave this place. And as we travel up and down the highway and byway, give us safe travel to our separate destinations. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, oh God. Bless the seed and the offering. Increase your people. Let them see the harvest from their one seed. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I love you. Hug somebody.